guys, how's it going? This is Tim, bringing you guys daily deals with Tim, where I talk about tech, crypto, and stock deals, all for you guys. And before I begin, this is my personal opinion and not financial advice. And today, I want to share with you guys the rising popularity of Bitcoin and blockchain. And if you guys have been in the cryptocurrency market or um, have seen news and some knowledge passing around, you, you can see that blockchain and Bitcoin is getting quite popular. But if you just talk, let's say on Slack or Reddit or Discord with um, with fellow people, you kind of it's hard to uh, gauge what the world thinks about it, what other people think about it. So if we're if we are like kind of stuck in this community of cryptocurrency believers or cryptocurrency enthusiasts, it's kind of hard to see the outside opinions. So I want to look at some uh, very influential figures in the world and some uh, yeah some leaders across the world and see how they think about Bitcoin and blockchain in general. So this first article um, it talks about the world bank president and he says that everyone is excited about blockchain so the president of world bank had some positive things to say and the president's name is jim young kim and he says that the technology is something everyone is excited about but he followed uh, followed it up with a cautionary argument about cryptos so this is what he says blockchain technology is something that everyone is excited about but we have to remember that Bitcoin is one of the very few instances. And the other times, when blockchain was used, they were basically Ponzi schemes. So it's very important that if we go forward with it, we're sure that it's not going to be used to exploit. And he told this to the network. So the World Bank, it's a financial institution that lends money to national governments. So... And they have already begun on this blockchain journey as they launched their blockchain development lab during the summer and supported research projects that uh, apply tech and these kind of capital formations. And he basically says that blockchain is is something that's growing and it's, it's going to be prepared for the future. And he says that Bitcoin is a very few instances that doesn't apply to these Ponzi schemes. So it's kind of nice to see how these kind of world bank leaders, uh, very influential figures in the financial industry, um, says that they're, everyone's excited about it, which probably includes him as well. But he just wants to make sure that, um, that people do not um, get lured in by these Ponzi schemes and that the, the coins do not exploit the people, but that people would uh, invest wisely into uh, these upcoming technologies that can be actually helpful for uh, the world. So interesting thing to uh, just check out. So let's look at the next one. So this one comes from the IMF Managing Director, the uh, Managing Director of International Monetary Fund. So another very influ influential figure in the financial industry as they kind of um, want to bring up the economic prosperity of globally and I, I believe there's around 183 countries that have joined in this IMF uh, organization and she says that cryptocurrency is expected to cause a massive disruptions so speaking at the Washington DC uh, Lagarde, the director, warned financial institutions that we are about to see massive disruptions as a result of cryptocurrency and distributed ledger technologies. And she stressed the need for institutions and regulators to adjust to the impact of the combined breakthrough technologies that will impact markets. So this is pretty crazy because this is coming from a global like economic organization that 
wants to kind of um, rise everything up to a prosperity level, but she says that you have to the blockchain and Bitcoin is going to disrupt this kind of a market cycle because we're coming we're going from a centralized place like a centralized financial uh, I guess area into a decentralized zone where the people can decide what the price is and the people can people have the choice on what they want to pay with what they want to receive what they want to transfer and this is a huge breakthrough and she even described Bitcoin as a broad and nuanced phenomenon and she dismisses those who claim Bitcoin is a fraud or a Ponzi scheme and she told reporters that I think we should just be aware of not categorizing anything that has to do with digital currencies as Ponzi schemes but it's actually a lot more than that and I really agree with her statement because I believe that Bitcoin and many other um, very high quality coins out there have the potential to change the global financial market and this is only the beginning in the future later down the years I cannot imagine the uh, the massive market size of the cryptocurrencies I also see a lot of altcoins falling out as there are many out there that have a lot of promises but no actual product no actual deals but i believe that there are quite a bit out there as well that will make it up the level and will actually prompt people to use them in everyday lives other than just on um, this cryptocurrency world but in daily life they would actually begin to use it all right so very good statement from a IMF director and thirdly here we go we got Jamie here good old Jamie Diamond at it again back at it again and he breaks the vow says that Bitcoin buyers will pay the price <laughs> so apparently he commented on Bitcoin like a day before saying that I don't care about Bitcoin I'm not gonna comment on it anymore and then day after not on an interview or kind of on a conference he says this if you're stupid enough to buy it you'll pay the price for it one day <laughs> says who cares about Bitcoin and the remarks from this is from Diamond he said that during September that Bitcoin's a fraud and he just keeps on going on that people who buy Bitcoin are stupid and that Bitcoin is great for criminals for Venezuela for for those very underperforming countries basically says that Bitcoin is yeah basically he goes back to his statement that Bitcoin is a fraud and <laughs> I don't know how long he will go at this but he also says during this interview that he likes blockchain but he doesn't like Bitcoin he thinks Bitcoin is a fraud but the technology that blockchain gives is actually good for the world and I'm kind of confused on how he can say that because blockchain would not exist without Bitcoin Bitcoin is how all this got started it is the original coin it has the most support has the most market value has the most trading volume has a lot of developers open source code that global developers work in it is decentralized it does have some problems with uh, consensus but overall it's one of the most stable coins out there that will make it out in the future I believe and saying that Bitcoin's a fraud I don't think he truly understand what it is because with Bitcoin transactions it's probably more transparent than actual fiat currency because if you if you give fiat currencies to someone it's you can't track that 
Well, for Bitcoin, when you transact, let's say you give one Bitcoin to another person, that transaction is public. You can literally see who gave it to who and which address gave it to which address. So saying that Bitcoin is only for criminals and for underperforming countries, <laughs> I think that is a very big statement to make. But it, Jamie Dimon is a very influential figure in the financial industry as well. And I think he'll continue to see this and continue to say this and nothing we can do about it as just regular day investors. But I think I think he'll probably he'll pay the price one day. That's just my speculation. But I, I do know he has a lot of power in the market. But I believe with this growing market of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general, once these things hit a massive market cap or massive influence over, over the global financial industry. I don't think Jamie Dimon and his company will be safe just because of the overall emotions and sentiment against this kind of behavior from the community. But that just that kind of doesn't really matter for right now. It'll take a time. It'll take its time getting up there, but we still have plenty of time. Now, lastly, I want to talk about Russia. And this is a crazy news. Um, I was shocked when I read this because it, <laughs> Russia is issuing crypto ruble. So ruble is Russia's current fiat currency. And the president, Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin has officially stated that Russia will issue its own crypto ruble at a closed door meeting in Moscow. So, and the this this was stated by uh, President himself, and that another speaker said that I confidently declare that we run crypto ruble for one simple reason. If we do not, then after two months, our neighbors in the Euro Asia Asia will. So, I think they kind of want to get on with this trend before everyone jumps along. But this is a this is a very interesting and shocking and kind of scary at the same time because. We have countries like Russia and the actual president confirming this kind of a big statement saying that they will have their own cryptocurrency called crypto ruble. And another thing about this is that from what I have heard that this will be not mineable and it will probably be controlled by the Russian finance department. So basically, this crypto ruble is a centralized currency and it is no different than just the Russian fiat currency. So I am kind of I'm kind of confused on why they would have this kind of a, a cryptocurrency but the purpose of cryptocurrency is to be decentralized and is to be for the people but they want to centralize it and make it their own now I don't know how this will do like honestly they say that the crypto rubles can be exchanged for regular rubles anytime and if the holder cannot explain where the crypto rubles came from a 13% tax will be levied. So they're going to have some tax regulations on this crypto ruble. And it's going to be controlled by the finance department of Russia. And I really don't know how this will go. Like it, people see that it's centralized. It is controlled by the government, controlled by the finance of Russia. What, what is it different than just regular rubles? Like, I don't know 
who would get this unless you're in Russia? And I don't know the the benefits of getting this crypto rubles unless the price is very volatile. But the thing is that what is the ratio going to be from regular rubles to crypto rubles? Because in cryptocurrency, the prices are very volatile and the prices depend on what people put in it. So let's say if crypto rubles is not popular, because why would any other people from other countries, why would they invest into this crypto ruble when they can't even use it in their own country? So I just think in globally, it's not going to be popular. It might be popular in Russia, but why would you use this crypto ruble instead of regular ruble when they're the exact same things? And you even have more of a chance to get taxed because if you can't explain where your crypto rubles came from, there's going to be a heavy tax of 13%. And the same tax will be applied to earn differences between the price of purchase of token, price of sale. So there's going to be heavy taxing on this kind of profit out of these crypto rubles. And if the price is volatile, there's going to be regulation on the prices. And overall, just it's just going to be a whole centralized mess. It's a jumble of complex currency that serves barely any purpose, in my opinion, just from reading this article right now. So um, it is cool. It is interesting that Russia is issuing their own cryptocurrency, but as it is centralized and as it is kind of regulated heavily by the financial department, I really don't see the benefits of having this. So while the idea is cool, the actual value of it is very low in my opinion. But another side effect of this kind of thing is that this is being announced to the whole world. It's, it's being announced to the whole country of Russia and other world will know this and it, it does a good job of marketing Bitcoin and blockchain because once they issue their own crypto, there is going to be a lot more people who notice this and see what is this thing called crypto and cryptocurrency. And I believe this will have a positive effect globally, but once people notice it, and notice that this this coin, this crypto rubles has really no value. And we that as crypto investors, what we like to support is something like Bitcoin or possibly Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever you support. But you want the basic idea. You want it to be decentralized and for the people and a community driven cryptocurrency that people will it will be more of a democracy and a, a people driven coin rather than a centralized coin that is governed heavily by regulations and taxation which is what we're trying to get away from so it has two effects or multiple effects both good and bad but i think um it's mostly good because i do like this kind of a marketing uh, side of blockchain and cryptocurrency coming from Russia. So yeah, this was a kind of a long video, but I just wanted to go uh, talk about these kind of influential figures throughout globally and just just noticing the popular trend of Bitcoin and blockchain. And although some people call it a fraud, although some people don't like it or like it, I think this this general publicity and marketing in general or i said that i repeated that but i think this is good for cryptocurrencies so yeah i'll leave it at that and if you guys like this kind of content like this video comment below and smash that subscribe button and also if you guys want to be notified when my new video is out ring that bell as well and if you guys want to support this channel 
check out my links below in the descriptions and I really appreciate that. And as always, I'll bring you guys more deals on Daily Deals with Tim.